everyone and welcome to part 2 of building my diorama based on the battlefield at Passchendaele. Um, today is the 99th anniversary to the day since the end of the First World War so that's why I've put a little tribute at the start to commemorate it. Um, thanks to everyone who's put a like, subscribed and commented on my videos. Uh, that's all really much appreciated and welcomed. Thanks for that. So where have I got up to since the last video? Well one thing I have done is um, I've joined up and got an Instagram account which is Barbarossa641 and what I've been able to do there is between the videos, between each part of the videos I've been putting progress photos on um, to show people how it's developing uh, so the, the wait between each video isn't quite so long um, and you can see, like I say, progress photos um, in between so that would help if you uh, want to have a look at that Barbarossa641 on Instagram that would be really appreciated too so what I've done since the uh, last video is I've given the, the groundwork a few coats of paint, uh, different shades, different tones and add a little bit of varnish um, to initially get things started or there'll be a lot lot more water added to it once I get some better products. I've painted the duck boards, um, added some more battlefield debris um, and, so, and also the barbed wire fences as you can see here. Um, I don't know if I'm too happy with how they finally looked, the formation of them, so perhaps I'll be working on those a little bit more. But at the moment, this is where I've got up to. So what I've decided to do is break this down into four uh, different parts, uh, four videos. The first video is obviously the initial part here from the front. Uh, the second video, which we're doing now, will be concentrating on this area here uh, with the, um, the, the post taken from this photo, as I mentioned in part one. Um, with the wagons, this will be here. Um, and then across here, I saw this photo recently on the internet and it gave me an idea to do a triage, uh, which is like a first aid post which has been flooded. So simply what I did was I cut out some of the uh, paper mache for this to fit. This is made out, just a simple entrance made out of balsa wood and that will be a little homemade sign will be there and that's going to just sit in there, be dug, be surrounded by plaster so it's all being built in. The entrance will be covered. Um, so you won't see inside there, you just have the impression that that will be going into the into the side of the, the, the road and then this will all be flooded with uh, with water um, just to give the impression that it's, uh, it's unusable anymore. So this will be video part two. Part three video will be this corner here which will be the bridge um, and the rest of this area here um, again all flooded with water and then part four, video part four will be the last one in the top corner when we'll build the Mark IV tank um, and they'll go into the ditch and finish off with the uh, the road and so that will be the completed series of these videos. Um, so what I'm going to be doing now, uh, from now on for this video, like I mentioned, is this area here. So I've got the carts, this one I've started on, this is about half finished so far, I've given it a few coats of paint. This was made out of, this was scratch built using this one as a template, this is from uh, Masterbox. This one is pretty much finished, I gave it a lot of weathering. Um, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, so the idea will be something like that um, to sit in there. Um, like, like I mentioned, taken from the photograph, um, the dugout will be here. For that purpose, I've made some con corrugated iron just out of some cardboard. Uh, some uh, yeah, cardboard, um, and that will be placed in there again with the wheels um, to look something something like that. Give it a little bit of height as well. Also, what I'll be doing is planting. Once I'm doing the plastering, is making some holes for the trees, which I haven't really worked on since the last video. Um, these will all be painted. This is just uh, twigs and uh, small branches, which I've covered in clay and textured. Um, and then these will be painted. What I'll do is I'll paint them before I put them onto the board. Um, so in the meantime, when I do the plastering, I'll make some holes and just put some of the original branches in, which I, which I'm not going to use to so the holes on filled and then take those out paint those and then replace them with those so that's what I'll be working on from now okay so a couple of things I've bought um, to help with the model first off I bought some scale picket posts um, these work out at just 29 pence each um, and they they're pretty nice uh, much cheaper than trying to make them, which I did try, um, and that's, that's quite nice. Put some barbed wire between each one. Uh, they were quite traditionally used during the war, so those will help with a bit of authenticity. And another thing I bought, which I know a lot of people make, um, I bought some sandbags from Value Gear. These are in different formations, 
uh, in different little piles and what I'm going to do with those is use these initially as maybe like a template to build a wall um, especially for the, the, the dugout with the wagons um, but dotted around the back of the field as well and then using uh, milliput uh, make the rest of the bags to like I say to form the wall and these were quite good value as well um, so that'll help and once the, everything is finished they'll be painted the same colour so they'll all blend in quite well but the detail on them is quite nice so that's those um, and then the last thing I found when I was out and about walking on some sand dunes, local sand dunes came across these little um, dried flowers, plants um, which will look quite nice because I haven't got a clue what they are but once they're picked off one by one and planted into the into the the grounds they look quite nice giving a couple of coats of, of paint or spray or something um, so those that add a little bit more detail as well um, so that's where I am um, at the moment so what I'm just about to do now is to make my own transfers I've created some myself uh, I want to go on the side of the cart and want to go on the triage sign on the the dugout from in the side of the road um, as I mentioned a moment ago, this card is pretty much finished and I'm almost done this. I've just got the wheels to do and then starting to add the mud effects. But before I do that, I'm going to put the transfer on. Um, on another video in the past, I've put it in a bit more detail of how I do the homemade transfers using uh, just transfer paper. I'll put a link to that at the bottom of this video. But uh, I'll just give you a quick demonstration as to how I go about it. Okay, so before I start um, doing a lot more plastering, I just thought I'd stop and show you uh, where I've got up to so far. Um, the little shelter has been finished off. I've painted the sand bags in three different colours of khaki and, uh, and given them a couple of oil washers. They, I've yet to add some pigments to them um, and maybe some, maybe some splashes of mud. Um, but they're installed now with the, uh, the roof of the shelter. Um, one of the carts has now been um, added with the plaster, so that's now pretty secure. These have got predetermined holes because I'm yet to paint the uh, the wheels themselves or finish painting them. But they will sit roughly about there. And the second cart, again, is yet to be added um, with the plaster and glued down. But that's roughly where it will go. Um, what I've also done, I'm not too, too happy about uh, the colour of the mud. Um, there's various shades of brown, which I'm not really, really happy with. This is the colour of the plaster that hasn't been painted yet. And I think I might go over more of a, a lighter colour um, than this darker brown. And I've also added some little bits of sand grains um, to add some more texture to the mud. Because again it was looking a bit flat um, 
looking like plaster so again um, that's all going to be sprayed over I'll have to give it another few more coats of, of a lighter colour of brown but, uh, but as I say that's where we are right now so what I'm going to start doing now is applying some plaster to these areas along the roads up to this point basically draw a line along here um, and add some more shear holes fill in I can now glue this in and, uh, and plaster it into the side of the road um, and then start adding some more duck boards uh, which will be painted later um, what I've also done is got some little pieces of broken uh, branches from trees outside um, and they will predetermine where the holes of the um, final trees will go and then once they're uh, once the plaster is dry I can just take those out and then once the trees are painted up they can go into the holes but the holes will be predetermined so as I say the next job now is to get this glued on add some more plaster, fill in all these holes, create a line here so I can work on this section um, and I've also um, just painted up some wooden strips and some more duck boards and they're going to go in this little area here to busy it up a bit. Okay, so a quick update on the last few videos that I just did. The first thing I noticed when I removed the model from out under the table where it was installed, um, just to keep it out of the way, um, I noticed that the trees, as you can see here, have got a little bit of mould on them. Um, that's not so much of a problem because they're going to be replaced um, with the with the real ones. They were just there to make the holes. Um, they can come out. But also on the transfers, as you can notice here, um, they've gone a bit blurry, a bit smudged. Um, and I think that's down to maybe a lack of oxygen, lack of air underneath the table. I've never seen that before, never had that problem before. But because the trees have gone mouldy, I'm thinking that might be something to do with it. So those transfers obviously have to be replaced because they don't look quite so, as good as they were. So I've um, printed them out again onto transfer paper. I'll have to replace the ones that are on the cart and on the, on the, the triage sign on the post. And, uh, and come up perhaps with a solution uh, to solve that problem, prevent it happening again. Maybe drill some holes somewhere around the edge of the table to allow some air through. Um, that's the only thing I think that perhaps has caused that. Um, I've dotted some roots from a tree um, from the garden and dotted those around the uh, around the mud to add a little bit of uh, variety and texture and interest to the mud instead of keeping it all just plain as I originally was going to. Um, and once that's oversprayed with the initial colour from an airbrush with the original colour of the mud, that'll all blend in quite nicely. Another thing I've done is I repainted the whole of the, uh, the mud area. Um, I wasn't very happy, as I mentioned before, about the, the shade of the brown. So I've got some mud in a jar, some mud paint colour. And so when I come to plaster all the rest of this board now, it'll be the same colour as, uh, as the first part here. Um, I've also repainted all the duck boards, given them a bit more of a contrasting colour. Um, they all blended in a bit too much and looked a bit too samey, I felt. So um, to, to paint them a lighter colour and then there'll be various shades of mud on these to obviously make them not look quite so new. Um, and that'll, uh, again, like I mentioned, that'll give a bit more contrast. Um, the water I've ordered, I ordered this product from MIG. Hopefully it, uh, it'll turn out quite nicely. I'll give it a little hint of, uh, of uh, mud colour using some, some paints. Uh, fine one, I'm happy with that. And these will go into the shell holes here. Um, and also the, the puddles and some smaller holes. Um, and I've also got some varnish and that will um, just paint over the, uh, some flatter parts of the, of the, the terrain um, and make that slightly darker. Okay now, so we're on to the last section of this uh, second part video. Um, I had an interesting last 24 hours, the water came for the, uh, for the puddles and for the mud and for the shell holes. 
Um, I wasn't really planning on doing a product review this late on into the video, but um, I had a few problems with it um, and some interesting uh, experiences. So I'll explain that in a minute. Um, basically, since then, uh, the last little sections of videos, um, I've put the new triage sign in and made a little door covering with milliput that's yet to be painted and it's just drying at the moment, um, just shaped it a little bit. Um, I've added, I've dry brushed the uh, groundwork, added some pigments and also then gave it a, a, a brush with the airbrush as well uh, to give it a few more tones and some colours, uh, colour variations. Um, I've added the trees as you can see. Um, in the next part, uh, part three of this video, I'll probably just do a quick show you how I did the trees. I'm quite pleased how they came out. Um, they've just been put into the holes that were made from the last uh, pieces of twigs and branches that I had and they've yet to be filled in. Um, like I say, they've just been good and so they're a little bit loose. So this is what I ordered for my uh, shell holes and for my muddy puddles etc. This is Migsacritic water for dioramas. Uh, this one is Wild River waters, although they do do six different types. Uh, lake water, deep ocean, Pacific waters, obviously clear depending on, on what you need it for and that obviously depends on the colour that the product comes in. And um, Before I open it, um, you can see there it says can be poured directly from the bottle into the prepared area. Um, there is a step-by-step um, -step guide on the internet on MIG's website that does uh, help with this. But the, uh, the ironic thing I think it says is can be poured directly. But as you can see in the actual uh, the jar itself, if you wanted to pour it, you may have a problem. Because it is very, very thick. It is just like a, a thick, thick paint. Um, the idea of that is um, initially, once it goes dry, it goes to a, a clearer colour, although depending on what the base colour is um, will be dependent on what colour or shade that this may go. Um, they say yeah, it can be mixed with water, it can be mixed with a little bit of acrylic to change the tone, um, although obviously once it's dried the variation of that may, would vary to the colours. Um, but as you can see in these pictures, once I mixed it with a little bit of water to dilute it uh, and a little bit of paint just to change the, the shade slightly, um, it all filled up with air bubbles and I could not get them out and then obviously once that's dry or drying it does not look like water um, so I think the idea is I bought the wrong kind of product uh, normally I go from not this one I normally use solid waters resin um, comes in two parts or so there are different brands one is the hardener one is the resin and you mix the two together and then you can, those you can add acrylics to change the colors um, it goes on like water, it looks like water, it dries like water. Um, so I'm afraid for me this one is banished to the stores box and I'll be getting myself um, not Deluxe's water but a similar brand and that will make the shell holes and the puddles etc look much better. What I did do, um, actually I just have a little bit of these left, I just did the practice run and as you can see in these pics um, it came out much much nicer as it should do um, so I'll be continuing uh, with this one. So this is what we're looking like underneath the table. Um, the next part in part three of the video I'll be working on this area here, the top right hand corner where the bridge will be. Um, I'll also be painting over the, the nasty acrylic water and, uh, and putting some proper resin water instead uh, make it much, much nicer. Finishing off the little triage post Working on the figures, at the moment I've neglected them a little bit, as you can see I've done the basic uh, uniform colour for the British soldiers, um, so I'll be working on those a bit more and starting on the Germans as well. Um, I'll be finishing off uh, the trees, the rest of the trees and showing you perhaps how I work on those and, uh, and that's about it for now. So thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Any likes and subscribers, more than, uh, more than welcome and I'll get cracking on for part three.